MG, hmm? why my prompts are getting blocked? I received no response from our custom GPT-4 chatbot. What did you ask in your prompt? Um, I asked, how can I delete and recreate my digital twin? Well, thanks to Azure AI Content Safety, I enabled that in our Azure OpenAI instance and it is automatically blocking lots of your special inputs and outputs to GPT-4. Oh wow, just for text input? Text, images, and even I'm thinking about videos. Oh wow. MG, I forgot the rest of the dialogue for this video. Can we go to the tutorial section? Let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. Alright, here is my Azure OpenAI service. We have already talked a lot about this service in our previous videos, but long story short, that's a playground that you can have something similar to ChatGPT that you can start chatting with your model as a playground. Check which model you want to talk with. Here, for example, I'm using GPT-4 because I deployed it here. You can check out the parameters when you are calling this API on the back end. Set up your prompt, system message, and so many different things. We already talked about that before. But the main part that we're going to focus today is content safety, which is actually a preview feature had it here named as content filters. So why it is important? Because I want to make sure I have sort of a control or monitoring system that can understand in case there are any harmful information inside the prompt or inside the generated answer by let's say GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 here or any model. So because it's important for me to make sure I am blocking those potential harmful contents. But harmful, what does that mean? If I click on create a custom content filtration, you will see some default categories developed by Microsoft, which is hate, sexual, self-harm, and violence. If any of these exist in my prompt, or in the answer of the model, it will be filtered and blocked. And I can even specify how sensitive I am to category, let's say, hate, if that exists in prompt. So if I put it all the way to low, that means I'm very sensitive to this category. I'm not going to pass any prompt that has hate inside. So if I go all the way low for all of them, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm creating my own customized content filtration. So let's give it a name, MG Content Filtering. I'm going to go to Next. Here I can add additional monitoring. For example, I can enable jailbreak detection. That means, what does jailbreak mean? If someone trying to change the behavior of this model when I am giving access to end users, for example, someone gonna say, hey, start acting to be rude or enforcing model to, to, to behave in a way that I don't want, that's called jailbreak and I don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna enable that. Protected material text. If, for example, there is, um, a song lyrics or articles that it has uh, some specific regulations or protection, I want to detect that, make sure I'm respecting other people's content. So I want to enable that. And lastly, protected material code. So if there's a source code from a public repository and it is licensed, I want to make sure that I respect that as well. So I enable that too. So these three options is optional here, but I want to have them all enabled. Clicking on next. So here is asking me, if I have a block list or not. What is block list? You can list out the keywords or web URLs or websites that you want to avoid them in your LLM application here or allow them. For now, I have nothing, so I'm going to go to next. And uh, the other question that is asked here is, I can decide if I want to have a synchronous content filtration or no. So by asynchronous, that means this content filter can run asynchronously and all those completions or prompts will be token by token in a delayed con. So there's a delay in content filtering signal. And up in approval with Microsoft, I can have that, but for now I want to go with the default version. And that's it. So now this is the summary of all the components that I added in place as my own content filtration. I click on create. Now I have successfully created a, a customized content filtration. Now the question is how I am going to add it to uh, my model 
let's say GPT-4 that I want to call it to make sure that is applied. So you go to the deployments, you see I have GPT-4 deployed already. So if I click on edit deployment, and under advanced options, there's a section called, do you want to apply any content filter? The default is Microsoft default content filtration, because by default, there is a content filtration. But I want to add mine, which is more strict than the default one as we created. So I click on save and close, now I have my modified content filtration, which is MG, added to this GPT-4. So that means if I go to the chat and ask something, let's say, let me ask a jailbreak example. So here is a jailbreak prompt example. So I am asking that, hey, you are going to be Dan, do anything now. So I'm trying to enforce the model that bypass the law or rules, do whatever I want without any censorship. So there's no censorship stuff. This is jailbreak. If I ask from GPT-4, you'll see that I immediately get this response. So it's not going to act. Even if I don't add my own content filtration, it's still gonna get blocked. But with my own content filtration customization, I can change the severity and how sensitive I am. So this is about sort of a text filtration coming in and the combination of content filters with OpenAI models. So when I deploy this and call my API for this GPT-4, I will have those content filtration that I had in place. But beside, inside Azure, there is another service called Azure Content Safety, which I created before recording this video. Just if you search Azure Content Safety in your portal, you will search and find this. You will create one, give it a name, that's what I gave. And then your content safety will have API endpoint and key. So what is this API, this Azure AI Content Safety? So let me show you the Content Safety Studio. Inside this studio, there are multiple examples that you can run for see how we can moderate the text content. We actually just did this in Azure OpenAI Studio, but if I want to show you with quick samples here, you'll see this is the same thing that we configured for Azure OpenAI. I can specify the threshold level. Let's say I'm very sensitive. Let's ask one of these uh, prompts. So chopping tomatoes and cutting the cubes or ridges are a great way to practice your knife skills. Let's run it. So it says that it didn't find anything in regards to hate, violence, sexual, and self-harm, right? But if I try something else, hmm, that means I think there's something this prompt. There you go. This is blocked because we bypassed the violence content filtering. So that's an issue. Not only just one by one test, you can run actually bulk tests. If you have a sample prompts, you can upload it here and run content safety over them. Here is an example of data set containing 20 records that which we classify as safe. This one actually has 100 records, as you can see here. These are all different prompts. And if I run this test, it will give me a summary of how many of these 100 records or prompts they have these violence, cell phone, blah, blah, blah issues detected by Azure AI Content Safety. I think we are done, there you go. So 75% of these 100 samples, they're allowed, 25% of them are blocked. And I can see the block one, for example, this one is blocked. I'm wondering why, let's click on that. Yeah, I can clearly say that why it's blocked, okay. So here I can see the summary of, okay, for the category safe, low, medium, and high in regards to violence, a lot of the prompts, almost 91 out of 100, they were safe. But we had six of them with low violence issue, and two of them with medium, and one with high. So the same thing for rest of the categories of content filtration. So that was about the text, and we already applied that in Azure OpenAI, and now we have this enabled in our own customized way for GPT-4 that we created there. But even for images, let's give it a try. For example, I have this image, which is a safe image. So if I run the test, it says that your content has been allowed because there is no issue with these categories, which I can still define the threshold. But if I have some images like this, I have to actually maybe blur that because of YouTube uh, regulations. If I run the test, it says that, oh, it's blocked because of it's showing a self harm. So that's gonna be an issue. The same thing I can run a bulk test of list of images and see what percentage of the images are reload or not. So I'm not going to run it again. And also, if I go back to the Azure AI content safety, I can have even multimodal. That's a new one. It's in private preview. You need to sign up, fill out the form, 
and I haven't done so so I cannot really run it here but you can have this content safety for inputs that are multimodal that can be text and images at the same time not separately we talked about jailbreak risk detection protected materials safety meta prompts actually let's give it a try for jailbreak this is the same prompts that I just tried and showed you that it blocked in Azure OpenAI if I run it here as well it tells me there's a jailbreak detected now the question is these are pretty cool actually um, I'm, my question is how would I add this in code well the good news is there is a Python SDK for Azure AI content safely and I can show you let me here is a code example in Python that it is calling Azure AI content safety and remember I told you Azure AI content safety service have a key and endpoint and you should grab it from Azure portal which is here and when you go back to this code oh, where was the code there you go you can put your input text and it will give it back to you if your text has any of these issues or not so you can check the input of the model of like GPT-4 and the output of that first by Azure AI content safely and then showcase it to the end user because if there's something wrong you don't want to show that to the end user in case if you have your own customized content filtration all right, that was a very quick overview of Azure AI content safely, but make sure that this is not the only way that you can make your LLM based or GPT based application safe and secure. Uh, this is a powerful tool you can certainly apply, and I just wanted to make sure you know this art of possibility to make your use cases more secure, but also there are multiple ways to even go further in your meta prompt or in your prompt in your system message codes you can still define how your model can perform to answer what type of question or do not answer what type of questions so from prompt point of view you still have control from this content filtration point of view you have control and you have also control accessing to end user so you can control who and how can access to your applications and in case if you want to provide a specific service to the end users make sure who you are including or who you are potentially excluding from the end user perspective that you're providing service so it is beyond just a tool conversation that we can have here but at least i saw that one of the tool based solutions that can certainly enrich us for going towards safety is azure AI content safety which is not that old it's getting evolved and potentially more features coming in so give it a try today and let me know your feedback, comments, suggestions. I'll, as always, read them all and respect them. Thank you so much. You need silence. Then your soul can speak to you about which ports to sail or which missions to fulfill in your life. Your soul will speak to you. Dream big, my friends. Believe in yourself and take action. Till next video, take care.